<laughs> All right, we're live. Uh, we're live. Another episode of the Narrow Talk. Uh, today, uh, joining us, we have Benjamin Earl Turner. Yes, sir. Uh, a very talented music artist that I, I just luckily discovered. Uh, I guess a lot of people in the Monero community just discovered. Yeah. Uh, with the release of his new EP titled Fuck. Uh, so it's a controversial uh and joining him is uh his producer and I don't, i'm sorry director uh I, i'm totally not I, I totally don't know what's going on in this industry so excuse me for that's uh cool. you know. that's cool we don't we don't truly understand crypto <laughs> either. yeah at all. But, but you guys are you guys are actually using it and making references to it which is exciting for us to see so yeah. uh that's why i wanted to bring you guys on so this is abteen am i pronouncing that right yep so yeah if you guys want to quickly introduce yourself uh and then we'll we'll get right into it so if you want to just i guess give a just a quick background on uh what what you guys do and what roles you played in in and making the video and how you guys got to where you are. I know that's those are a lot of questions, but just a quick intro if you can. Yeah. Yep. Ben. Uh, thanks, my guy. Uh, <laughs> so uh, my name is Benjamin Earl Turner. Um, I'm a recording artist. Uh, I think I sort of I most like to reference myself as a writer and performer, just because I think that gives me the leeway to operate in multiple spaces, but. Uh, for those who need me to dish it a little simpler, I'm I'm a rapper. Um, I uh, I I got um, sort of really lucky in I think being relatively tech savvy and even more so lucky and more so blessed to link with Abteen. Um And we sort of had very similar understandings within our own industries of the limitations of uh of people pulling the strings and, and having oversight if you will um and so then we just kind of were like yeah let's do this shit and and then it happened which was very dope um yep uh and i'm i'm a uh, commercial director i mostly direct commercials uh all around the world right now i'm in london uh I was actually just in South Africa. It was summer over there. I was shooting a commercial. Now it's it's snowing outside in London. We're editing the commercial here. Um, but yeah, I've been. I mean, I, I I direct commercials, but I started with music videos, and really, I, I stopped doing music videos after a certain time, almost as like a reaction to just how the industry works. Like, because I think ultimately for us like we're coming at this whole like monero and and bitcoin and crypto thing just how we can apply it to essentially decentralizing art um because i think the entertainment industry kind of suffers the most from centralization right like all all big movies are sequels right because you have movie studios that are too afraid to take risks and are you know very detached from what audiences want uh record labels same thing like they're deciding for us who's going to be famous right like and what it, i don't know what it's based on like maybe it's based on like what an artist looks like uh and obviously the music industry is like the slowest to adapt right like remember napster like mp3s came out and they're like you know we can't have that we got to stop that <laughs> but you can't stop it like it already exists right yeah um and I saw something, I don't know, Ben, if you know this, it was some rap album just got number one on the on the charts from selling the most copies, but it was like 1,200 copies. Like, no one's buying CDs. Yeah. Anymore. Um, so even, even like, uh, I know Future, there's an artist, Future. Who, was, I think it may have been Future. Yeah, who recently dropped Wizard his project wizard and i think he moved you know the way they do the sell sales now is sort of really interesting where they're trying to crank the numbers as it relates to digital streams versus hard sell copies and the hard sell number was something around like 12,000 and that was supposed to be like a big number mind was you was it 12,000 or was it 1200 i feel like was it was 12,000 like it was, it was like, a, it was like 1000 it was like a really small number but it still got them to number one. On yeah. The charts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, Doug, I, I, I've been kind of just really interested in crypto for many years. Um, and actually our cinematographer, Michael Reagan, who shot this music video is also same as me. Like we've got in both around like 2013. Um, and we, we shoot commercials all around the world. So we were just kind of just trying to spread the gospel, right? Like we're just going around, like we were in Sweden together in 2013, telling people about Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And obviously like no one, no one knew what we were talking about. And it wasn't until the price of Bitcoin went to like over $10,000 that people started hitting us up asking like, what is this? Like, right. how do we buy it? <laughs> like, I, I convinced like, I was shooting a commercial in Uruguay and I convinced a bunch of my crew to buy Bitcoin. I think the price was like 11,000 at that time. <laughs> there are... Oh, uh -oh. Like, um, you're coming in and out. Uh, can you hear me? Yep, I got you. Yeah, so I mean, what what initially really excited me about this, you know, seeing this video, um, and what you know, because I, I hear you're saying you've been in Bitcoin since whatever 2013, you've been interested in it. Um, but you know, having the skills you have, which is being able to produce media, um, you you didn't. Yeah. It, it didn't come across, you know, you teamed up with, with Benjamin here. I don't know how exactly how you guys met, uh, but you guys produced a real piece of art that just happens to uh, mention Monero. It actually doesn't even mention Monero by name, uh, just uses it in the video. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of the themes behind the EP from what I'm reading. Uh, it seems very multi-layered. Uh, it's a real piece of art. It's not... Um, you know, a couple of Thank guys you. just trying to, you know, make a few extra sales by mentioning Bitcoin or Monero. Uh, it seems like you guys, it's fundamentally built on some of the themes that Monero and crypto is built upon. Um, kind of like this freedom and liberty, uh, even just the and, you know, the title is fuck, which I guess is, you know, I guess you guys, I think it's fair to say you are strong believers in censorship resistant uh, communication, right? You're not, you're not afraid Definitely. to say what's on your mind. You guys want to be able to not. express yourselves, <laughs> express yourselves freely. Yeah. And that's what Monero really is at its core, right? It's about uh, freedom of, of speech and expression, but through the ability to send value to whoever, to whoever you want without being censored. And I just like the way you guys kind of interwove it in there in 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 just an organic way. Yeah. And that that's yeah. what excited me about it. So if you want to talk more along those lines, I don't is actually um I think Benjamin, I guess you had written this, um, the description of your album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, do you do you mind reading that? Because that was just uh, uh do you have that? Yeah, I think I can pull that up really quick, actually on my phone. Um and yeah, I'll, I'll read it. And then I, I definitely like this is a pretty fun question, I think, for both of us, um, for all the ways that we sort of are thinking about this thing. But uh, the abstract is as follows. Fuck is a four song EP. Um, and it is an inspired meta narrative modeled after the novel Erasure by Percival Everett. Each song is meant to emit irreverence, apathy, and animalistic impulse. Still, in all the ways that the music sounds uh, amoral, uh, Fuck is more accurately characterized by its deft performance of balance, its exciting musical pursuit of striking harmony between self-awareness and self-sabotage, between hedonism and asceticism. Uh, so I, I, think, I think why this is like such a fun question for both me and Abtine, one of the things he and I bonded on really early was um our our shared sort of love for for english and and studying good shit. um that's true and and i think every currency every like we we work in metaphors right like me and abteen both and abteen being being persian and, and speaking farsi and like having an understanding of the way that like language functions as metaphor uh for him and then me being along like i've been a poet since i was a kid i've been a writer since I've, i was a kid and i promise this is all going to make sense so 
but we both sort of function and speak and move in in metaphor and our art does the same thing and so i think what we got excited about and are excited about is sort of the metaphor or the narrative that monero has like if we're just honest part of what fiat currency has going for it is that it has a story right like the american dollar has a story if you hold up a dollar anywhere in the world an american dollar like it holds a long narrative a long uh metaphoric value that extends beyond just what it can buy you and because of that that's why like the world's economy is backed by this dollar because of what it represents not even because of what it does because right it's fiat so we know that it's not actually it, it's worth is its story and so i think for us it became exciting to to sort of start to build the monero metaphor like let's build this story up let's like let's show how ridiculously valuable something is when it's untethered um and that metaphor is is functional right it's it's a moving living metaphor it's not just some shit that we cooked up in a book it's it's observable in the actual piece of art where monero is seen so you see uh, the only reason the video can exist is because we are untethered. Therefore, Monero has a rightful place in the art because it too is untethered. So I, that that's sort yeah. of, I think, a big part of how we we got at it. But I think Abteen can absolutely speak to it more as well. Yeah, and the, I mean, <clears throat> you asked earlier kind of how, how we met and like really the way this video came about was very serendipitous. Like Michael Reagan and I, the cinematographer, happened to be in Detroit and we were making a series of commercials for Ford. And our mutual friend, Galan, who's friends with Ben, showed me Ben's music. And he was like, you should make a video for this dude. And I listened and just within seconds, I was just like, this guy is undeniably super talented. Like I, I gotta make a video for this guy. But really what excited me was the fact that he's not signed <clears throat> to a record label because you know, I spoke about kind of how I stopped making music videos as like a response to the way that record labels work because that that model's broken, right? It's old. Yeah. Like you should let the people decide what's good. And yeah. and technology and the internet is kind of democratizing art, right? Like there are no gatekeepers anymore. You know, I'm holding the key. You're holding the key. It's a private key or whatever. Like, you know, we made copies for everyone <laughs> and the gates open. Like we yeah. can do whatever we want. And that's 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 what was really exciting is just this idea that we can make a film that's essentially permissionless. Like there was no commissioner. Like no one told us that we're allowed to do this. You know, there was no record label. There wasn't even a treatment or a concept, which is really, really rare. Like you can't in order to do what we did, you just need trust. Like Ben trusted me and I, and I had full faith in him as a, as a performer and a rapper. Um, and it allowed us to just kind of create art in a very spontaneous way. Like it was, it was a very pure process. Like we just went into it. We shot this Ford commercial and the very next day we started shooting this rap video and we just let it kind of evolve super organically. Like, and that's, it's truly the rarest thing because when you're working with record labels, obviously everything has to be approved beforehand. Like you can't just show up in Detroit and start shooting. And obviously also Detroit, um, like we were doing stuff like, we had a great producer, Rich Hutchins, who <clears throat> just made kind of the impossible happen for us. like. We were requesting stuff like, can we get like a, a bulldozer full of money? It almost is a joke. And the very next day he's like, cool, like I got the bulldozer, like what street do you guys want to put it on, you know? Uh, we, we put Ben in a hot tub in the back of a pickup truck and we're just driving around Detroit, like just driving by the police, like they didn't care. I don't, it's, it's, as a filmmaker, it's truly like a utopia to film in a place like that. Um, yeah, it but seemed like it seemed like very guerrilla style the way you guys did. It was very um, guerrilla style. I mean, it was permissionless in every sense. Like we didn't get permission to film in any locations. Like 
when we shot in a casino, a casino is a very hard place to film. Like you can't do that without tons of money. But we just went in there and like concealed our camera and just stole the footage as quick as we could yeah. and just ran out of there. You know, yeah. that's kind of the approach. Like that's how we made the film. Um, and it's just like we we did essentially whatever we wanted to do. Like we just started putting in things that we liked. You know, we're like, we like Bitcoin. We like Monero. We like video games. <laughs> like we just start, it's just like, I don't know. I think like just to tie it back, like, you know, this whole cryptocurrency thing is built on this idea of trust, right? Like you, you can you can put your full trust in this mathematical system with absolute faith in it, you know? And it's not controlled by any one entity. And we wanted to, to I think we used Monero as a logo in our film as a signifier of that, like that our art is decentralized. There's no one commissioning it. And we're just, we're taking it. We're doing what we want. And I, just to follow up on that, just in the same way um, that a cryptocurrency like Monero is adopted because of sort of the, it, particularly Monero, because of the merits of the coin, um, we, we look at the art as being adopted or being received well, being spread because of the merits of the work, not because uh, we, we fit a cookie cutter algorithm that was cooked up in a boardroom by people who don't know anything about music or anything about art or about visuals, right? So it's, it's, uh, it's sort of truly been mind blowing to watch the way that this is essentially like just the, this, this, this film and this music is just a really good ass white paper. You know what I mean? And people are getting, like people are just like, yeah, I'm, I'm buying. I'm buying in, like I want to be a part of that, and and to me that's where that's the new model of art. Like that's the new model. That's what art should be. Um, is I'm going to be moved by the totally. art first, uh, and if I'm moved by the art, then absolutely I want to endorse it. I want to see more. I want to fund it, and I want to fund it freely. I want to let them do. I want to give continue to give them, uh, you know, autonomy. Um, and that's again, that's new. That's new compared compared to I like what you're doing or I like your potential. I'm gonna buy you out and then I'm gonna direct you in whatever way I say you should go. You don't have creative freedom. You have to have a treatment. You have to have permits. You have to have uh, even brands pop certain brands popping up, right? Like that was a huge thing in the past right. three to five <laughs> years. Like having Ciroc Beats. was yeah. having Beats, Beats by Dre. Headphones. Um, the amount of songs where you hear talking about paddock watches or you talk about Gucci clothes, like that's not just because that's what rappers are into. That's because companies pay record labels to direct their talent to put those things in their music. And so you don't see any other brands except for this cryptocurrency in the whole video. And I, um, I mean, yeah. and I'm sure you guys are aware of it, but that also ties in nicely to the Monero project uh, with Monero in particular, obviously Bitcoin as well, just being one of the truer open source projects um, in crypto land. I'm sure you guys have heard of a lot of these other coins uh, like Dash uh, is an yeah. example where they have these uh, where they put a lot of their resources to actual marketing yeah. and are like, you know, yeah. kind of doing this top top down thing instead of bottom up right so monero is really from the bottom up i mean everything is really grassroots and organic and it is uh just a very true distributed system where people are coming together and without permission are contributing in any way they want so like i started this youtube yeah. show you know i'm not yeah. i'm not sponsored yeah. by anyone not not that i don't want to be but you know it's, right. it's starting right. organically um yeah. And with a lot of the other cryptos, you're not seeing that. And I think that's a true strength. And that's going to, you know, the, the coin that I don't know how you guys are seeing this whole space, if you guys have analyzed it at all. But uh, yeah. I have team, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm you not, have. I'm not, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure about you, Doug. But for me, there's only two coins, Bitcoin and Monero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And there's a bunch of other, there's a bunch of scams. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, my, my these trajectory. Are the, these my, are the, the purest. The exactly. Coins. I mean, that's so I, I don't know. I'd be interested in hearing how you guys or 
Aptin, because I know you've been in crypto for a long time, how you arrived at that, at, at being a Monero guy, or now you're a big, you know, going from Bitcoin yeah. to being a Bitcoin and Monero. I mean, for me, uh, it was really just kind of trying to understand what the invention was at its core. And I always go back yeah. to the fact that the whole purpose of this stuff is to be able to uh, do peer-to-peer -peer transactions without any middleman, censorship resistant, yeah. and just the one that can do that the best. But I'd be curious to hear why uh, you have arrived at Monero and you think there's only two yeah. coins. Well, uh, I mean, I was, I, I did dabble in, in other cryptos and Actually, Michael Reagan made a really good analogy recently. He said, our cinematography, he was saying that uh, altcoins are basically like like heroin. Like you get addicted to the thrill of these gains and it takes it takes nearly dying to realize you got to quit. <laughs> um, but really, I mean, for me, I think when I, when I first heard about Bitcoin, I feel like the original narrative around Bitcoin was essentially like, what Monero actually is. Like when I first heard about Bitcoin, I was told that it's an anonymous version of cash. Like that's like the platform Bitcoin was running on. I mean, not that they were running on any platform, but that's what people were saying. Um, and I think just as I learned more, it, it basically came down to as soon as I learned about Monero and I realized that it was anonymous and untraceable and fungible, <laughs> all in the base layer, I was like, this is, a no brainer, like this is the most powerful currency. Um, and also being Iranian, like obviously, you know, I can't, I can't easily send, most of my family lives in Iran. Like I can't send them money through the bank or whatever, but I can easily send them Bitcoin or Monero. I think I just fell in love with the idea of essentially being your own bank, all the stuff that, that Bitcoin I, I still love Bitcoin. I mean, I'm I'm still a huge proponent, but I think for me, Monero is the most powerful. Like just the fact that it is untraceable and anonymous. Um, and yeah. even just like, I, I think an another thing that people kind of seem to be ignoring right now is just the problem of fungibility. Like uh, how how is Bitcoin gonna solve that in the future? Like, I don't know, you know, maybe they won't, but. And I think I think to that end, like a good sort of summary, uh, the the idea is utility, right? Like I think utility in so many ways sort of trumps all. You can make things that are um, that have utility, but that aren't you know sexy. You can turn a thing sexy, but it's really hard to to take a sexy thing that has no value and and sort of ride it to the wheels fall off. Um, because the wheels fall off so early. And so a lot of the other coins are really sexy. They get big names involved. They they yeah. sort of like do these fat ass releases and and spend all this money on looking really good. But they have the, the value is like they actually do nothing. Like what problem do they solve? So m my initial like sort of entry into crypto I think was just hearing about it like in like 2012, 2013, maybe, maybe even before then, but as like, a, it was only connected to like Silk Road. Like I didn't have a great understanding. Um, but then I, I have an older brother who is super like with the shits, you know what I mean? As it relates to crypto, that is to say like, the man is a savant, you know, he, he has a fine taste. He's like taking crazy losses. He's had crazy gains. Um, and the thing that he really taught me was utility. Like at the end of the day, if the coin can't solve a problem, it can't exist in the long term. And Monero solves the number one problem that created cryptos in the first place, which is again, fungibility, completely anonymous, completely untraceable, completely tr untraceable. Like that, that value it can turn sexy. We can make it sexy later. And I think that speaks to the idea of sort of a ground up because the utility threshold so high, people will be attracted to it and people continue to choose it as the coin to use. So it just, it just makes sense. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And we just, yeah, you, we just, you just explained that you just explained that very well. I mean that you just touched on all. Um, 
perfectly. <laughs> he just started oh using uh, <laughs> we just started using cake cake wallet on iPhone. Yeah. It's it's really it's really great. Like I don't I'm not sure what we need for adoption, but just using cake wallet, like it's so simple and so easy. Um, yeah, because we are we have like a little QR code. We're accepting donations, because um, again, like we're trying to create the decentralized version of art, like the decentralized record label, the decentralized studio. Um, and the dream would be that we can just create whatever we want whenever we want because people like us, like people right. want to support us. Yeah. Um, and also, I think I mean I, I mentioned that there was no concept for the video. Um, but there was a concept in a couple things. Like one is that we wanted to create something that, that was very irreverent. Like we wanted to take a, yeah. all the tropes that you see in hip hop videos and turn them on their head. You know, like in a hip hop video, you would see a pile of money, but like when you see it in a bulldozer covered in mud, like stuck to the bottom of the rapper's shoe, you know, like, or you would, you would see someone shooting dice, but would he be sitting on a toilet with like safety deposit boxes behind him? Um, so it was really, that was part of the angle was to make a response to what hip hop videos are like, you know, it was like, I don't know if you noticed this, but in our video, we never repeat a setup. Like it just keeps cutting to new things because every hip hop video that I see has like three to five setups and it just Max. cuts back and forth between yeah. them. And in our video, we wanted to just be like, Hey, here's something really cool we're just going to show it to you for three seconds like we're just going to throw it away and go to the next scene um and that was obviously like in order to do that like you either you need either lots of money which we didn't have <laughs> or you need just people who are down to work for a long time which is what we had we had and our crew was very small it was me our producer, Rich Hutchins, Michael Reagan, the cinematographer, and me and Mike were shooting a commercial right before. So we had just uh, made some money and we had like essentially freedom to do what we wanted. And we just shot for a week. We shot for a whole week, which is rare. Like music videos are shot in one day, like two days maybe, sometimes three if you're really lucky. Um, and that's, I think it's it's a it's a result of not having money, you know? Like because we had no money, we couldn't really pay for anything. So like it's almost the same as having lots of money. Like you when, when you have no budget, it's almost as liberating as having a million dollars. Like um so we stayed for a week. We shot we didn't shoot all day. Like we shot at very precise times. Like we made sure that we always filmed at sunset uh during magic hour and stuff like that and we just just kept it going and we just knew that we needed to get a certain amount of ammo before we left Detroit. We we're like, we need to get like 50 different scenes because I don't want to repeat ever. I'm never cutting back to anything. Like once you see something, even like the way that we start the video is Ben in a studio, like sitting on a white psych. And you would expect that we would use that. It's a studio. Like you'd expect that we'd have him rapping there but the very first shot is just him walking away. Like he just leaves the studio and he's like, I'm not, this isn't me. I'm going out here. Next thing you know, he's like out here coming out of a manhole. There's like dogs running around, like we're taking him out of the studio. But I mean, I, also he left the money. I don't know if you saw that. There's a lot of symbolism going on. He left the money on the table. <laughs> he left the cash on the table. And Do you think, we, you think we could play the video? I don't know how uh, well it's gonna, the quality would be. You guys mind if I give yeah. it a shot? Yeah, let's go let's for it. it. Um, all right. By the way, Doug, how did you find our video? Because we're also on the grassroots type of thing. We haven't we haven't really distributed it yet. It's only got it's so, just starting. Like I mean, you could have somebody. It. Yeah, somebody posted it on Reddit and on uh, yeah the Monero Reddit. On Monero. So, okay. Yeah, I think I think every hardcore we Monero love, user yeah. knows about I it. Just, I mean, I just love anyone who likes Monero is ultimately what it comes down to. Like, <laughs> in, in in South Africa, when because I, I was making this commercial, we had a driver. His name's Enzo. And he was just, we were talking about Bitcoin. He's like, yeah, I uh, I mine Monero on my GPU. Wait, hold and immediately I was like, en Enzo, you're my favorite person that I've ever met. Like, Are we going? Can you I guys? <laughs> I think um, so. I saw it for a second. 
I think your screen, yeah, I see it on your screen. It's a bit choppy. Is there a way to get the sound on? Is that working? I mean, I, I guess it's working. People are seeing the images, but uh, you know, it's not gonna it's not gonna do it justice. It's not a. You know what? Let me try one more. Is that better? Uh, a little bit. It's still pretty choppy, though. Yeah, let's not. It's not. It's not going to do it justice. Anybody that wants to watch it can. Yeah. Can go see it. Um, but I was just yeah. even just watching it now. That's why I was ignoring you guys because it's it's captivating. <laughs> it's a great. Yeah. It's it's just it's genuinely just good. It's it's real art. It's uh it's really raw and you Thank guys. You. It's it's the real deal. Thank so, you. Yeah. Um, how about in terms of like accepting Monero for the purchase of the album? Did you guys are you guys yeah. working on that? Yeah. I know that I saw some tweets. That, that's definitely, definitely. I mean, I think. Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, well, that's on. That's in uh, coming. That's in the hopper. Uh, just really, as of now, some of the things that I've been coming across. It's a bit of. It's a bit of a sort of um, difficult process, um, but but I think we're just trying to figure out how to make it as seamless as possible, where it can just be a transfer to transfer. Um, but again, what's so funny about this is it's like the way that this works, uh, just like a sort of quick nerd out, is that distribution companies sort of popped up out of nowhere and middleman, like we just stopped using the middleman of the label. So there's companies like DistroKid, STEM is really great. Um, and that's what I use to do a lot of my distribution. Uh, hopefully they'll get Instagram on deck. Shout out to STEM, get it together. Uh, TuneCore. Um, so these different companies, essentially an, an artist can go on to DistroKid or they can go on to STEM and for a very small fee, um, that doesn't touch your royalties, doesn't touch your ownership of the music, they will distribute to all of the digital stores and they will also um, recoup all of your royalties and then send you out a check. And so here, here sort of, there's this moment or there's this opportunity for something like Monero to enter into that project, right? It's like the only reason that I can't accept Monero directly is because there's no digital store that offers to house music for the sale of, of Bitcoin. Do you right? guys know the uh, the Coral, I think it's called the Coral Reef Project? I was re I was reading about that. I was reading about that. Yeah, that was, you guys know Globy? I do not. So Globy was started by uh, Fluffy Pony, Ricardo Spagni. Right. He's he's kind Fluffy. of the, yeah. He saw, our, the, he, he saw our video. He acknowledged yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. We just needed Fluffy to see it. <laughs> um, yeah, so he started Globy, which is it's a, a payment uh, a payment network for you know, Monero and Bitcoin and some of the other cryptocurrencies, making it easy for merchants uh, to accept uh, cryptocurrency um, on their e-commerce sites. So that's why I think I had put you guys in touch on Twitter. They would be yeah. good people to talk to. And then they also started, I think it was called a Coral Reef. Uh, project they yeah. launched maybe two uh, Christmases ago, and uh, the idea—I mean, it's—it's it's a way for for musicians to, I believe, to uh, basically sell their music for cryptocurrency. I know yeah, Mariah Carey was like the uh, yeah. I remember the Mariah one Carey. Ever... How did she? How did she know to do Monero? Oh, so I long get... ago. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think that was Fluffy uh, working his working his magic there um yeah so and you heard about 50 cent 50 cent like 
accepted Bitcoin in like 2015 and like forgot about it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Suddenly he had all this like. Yeah, <laughs> and like, I think amazing. I do think too, just sort of a random aside is like there, there have certainly been other artists sort of trying but the beauty and difficulty of it is that it is uncharted territory. So you even see, but but I think the key is to not be like, um, to not be sort of uh, in vulture mode, right? And I think artists fall prey to that, especially larger artists. They they want to, they just see it as an investment, like another come up, instead of seeing it as sort of like a change of the game, because I think like about I think about Wu Tang and how Wu Tang had a coin come out, or how sort of all these other different artists have worked towards it or sort of acknowledged it, but it's been with this with this premise that it's only another way to make some money rather than another way to do sort of commerce um, and another way to right. do do economy, and I encourage other artists and I encourage other users to recognize the difference. Uh, I'm, I'm not super excited about just making, like tapping into another market of users. That's, n that's not what excites me or Abteen. I, I think what, or Mike or any other folks who are involved, what excites us is the idea of transitioning to uh, a different plane, uh, a different operating, system if you will um and art always has this beautiful role in guiding our senses and our sensibilities towards new tastes um so i, I really just am hoping that other artists because i want to pay homage to them i know other artists have engaged with cryptocurrency but the way that they've engaged again is not seeing it for a change in the game they're just seeing it as another come up on a dollar right. but I don't really yeah. want the dollar. I, I want the transition to a different system. Um, right. And I think artists play such a large role in transitioning systems. So, you know, that that's just an important distinction. <clears throat> Beautifully said. What do you think is going to be the motivational? I mean, you, you found motivation in it, but why will other artists uh, find motivation here to kind of make this transition? Because because we don't like being controlled. It is not inherently in the artist's nature unless it is their performative project, unless that is a part of the art that they're making. But art has been so homogenized and commodified that it can't exist without the fiat currency of the dollar backing it. And when the dollar's backing it, then those dollars represent investors and investors represent interests. And so the same system that infects our politics or infects our school systems or infects our sports or whatever sort of aspect of our society is now infecting the art. So the art that we're seeing is art that is modeled from the interests of the dollar holder. And right. so we're looking at an opportunity to cut the shackles, that's the value. That's why it's attractive is because other artists can say, I got this, I got this Monero, I got this Bitcoin and it's totally detached from a particular user or a particular bank of interest, right? Uh, the bank of interest is whoever. Um, the bank of interest is you, is your wallet, which means that I can operate freely. And I think that's one of the main draws for me. Um, yeah. 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 I think that's, um, that's a, that's a great way of looking at it. I mean, do you see this, where do you see this going then? I mean, do you see this kind of, I, I don't want to, you know, sound too, uh, uh, too excited here, but kind of like another Renaissance here in terms of where we're headed. I mean, like you yes. started to see it even with things, obviously the internet itself, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, democratize things and, uh, you know, Kickstarter, right? That was, that was like, we like, we really started to see like projects, creative projects that normally wouldn't have gone anywhere were able to um, get traction because it was, they were able to be crowdsourced. So do you see yeah. uh, crypto and, and Monero in particular kind of fostering some, some, new creativity that would have otherwise 
never seen the light of day? <clears throat> Hopefully. I mean, that's the dream. Um, <clears throat> that's definitely the dream. Yeah, I, 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 on my end, absolutely. I don't even think it's, but I'm a bit of a, I don't know. I read too many uh, science fiction and, you know, cyberpunk books, but I, I think it's absolutely on the horizon. And here's why, at the end of the day, the label, the production company is a bank. It's a bank for artists. The label gives an advance and in exchange for your fealty, damn near your soul, you get a large chunk of money to make art that they pre-approve, right? If Monero users become my bank, then at the end of the day, I can make whatever I want because the very nature of the user and the nature of the platform is like, we just, we fuck with this. We believe in this, so go do you, right? And I think from that vantage point, if, if, if Abtine and I came, if we suddenly had 100,000 Monero, <laughs> we, would, we would do exactly what you almost expect, which is just make whatever the fuck we wanted, right? If we had a million dollars, nine times out of 10, that million dollars is gonna come with a bunch of constraints that wouldn't come with the cryptocurrency. And so that to me is the excitement. Um, and and there's yeah. certainly arguments, <clears throat> and to I be think made that, there, but but you know I gotta be helpful. Like what the fuck? Yeah, and I nail on the head with just you know art. It's not supposed to be a commodity. You know, it's just it's just human expression. Um, <clears throat> and me as a filmmaker, like the cruel thing about my art <clears throat> is that I need lots of money and lots of people to practice it. You know, like. And it started with me making music videos. I was making music videos for like $5,000 and I was shooting for like four days with that budget. And then suddenly I started doing commercials. The budget was now a million, but they were saying I can only shoot for two days. And I'm like, how does the, how do these budgets work? I was using 5,000 for four days. Now you're telling me a million is two days. And it's because yeah. like Ben is saying, like this money, it comes with constraints. Like, suddenly you have all these people i have 100 people on set i don't exactly know what everyone's role is right like it's, it's just it's just how it is like and when you have a record label giving you money and that's that's the thing that you know we, we're trying to avoid is if a record label gives us a hundred thousand dollars to make a video suddenly we can't do what we just did like we can only shoot for a couple days they're going to tell us that they want to edit it a certain way you know, they're not going to want, they're not going to let us even necessarily come up with the concept that we want to, because maybe it doesn't align with what image they think Ben should be. And, yeah. and we want Ben to create his own image, you know, like whatever he wants. And that's, that's, that's the dream for artists. And I think yeah. hopefully, hopefully, you know, Monero and Bitcoin and these kinds of things will help facilitate that. Beautiful. I mean, it, it just frees the artist to, to be, to get in touch, be as creative as, as they, as they are and not be restricted uh, yeah. by the people that are, that are, are paying the bills. I mean, in a, in a way it gives the art its teeth back, right? Like art yeah. needs to be irreverent. Art needs to be, uh, it's nature sort of demands that it shakes you. And, and it's not because it's inherently political or otherwise, although I'm not afraid and none of us should be afraid of like political art, but it's because it's such a direct expression of the self and the self is so different from every other self that exists, that, that is a, that's naturally a shocking exposure, right? Like if I get a, a, a genuine expression of you it absolutely should shock me in some ways in some way because that's going to be so different and unique from me and yet you know that old adage sort of the the artistic cliche that it that which is most personal is most universal and that's sort of where art gets to fluctuate and move but when art becomes propaganda or content um or or it becomes ad advertisement 
when art gets tested, right, to see how well people will respond to it, how it will make people feel first, you are pro you are taking grips and you're pulling out the teeth of the art. And so the idea is that we want to give art, we hope to make art that keeps its teeth. So even in 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 within fuck and within the film that we made together, the fact that you don't get to get settled on an image is uh, unsettling, right? But it's pleasurable at the same time. No, no company is gonna let us do that. They're gonna be pissed. They're gonna be annoyed. They're gonna they're gonna think that it's wasteful. They're gonna say that they don't see another video made that way and that doesn't test well, right? Which are all impositions on what turned out to be some fire shit, <laughs> like you know. Yeah. And also, I mean, they would never let us, what, would, what is never allowed is to make a video without writing a treatment. A treatment is like a pitch deck that, mm -hmm. that tells, tells the record label exactly what we're gonna do. Like we hadn't, we didn't have that at all. We had nothing, no. we just- we, we had a bunch I of think, cool ideas. We, we just had some ideas that we wrote down on like a, like a text message thread. Like, yeah. like I, I think at one point Ben said something like he was like, you know, It'd be cool if I was in a hoodie that said, I am Satoshi. And I was like, sick, like, let's also put you in a Monero hoodie as well. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, like, yeah. and then, uh, and then Michael Reagan, our cinematographer, he did the animation. I don't know if you noticed, there's like a Monero logo on his. Yeah, helmet. I wanted to ask you guys about that. Was that just from this video or was that elsewhere in the, yeah. I okay. It's from, we made it for the video. Yeah. So like there's, there's one where, uh, Ben is basically Super Mario and he's collecting Bitcoin in a, in a tunnel. And then he comes out of a manhole. Um, and the other one is like a Gundam. He's like a Gundam pilot <laughs> who has a Monero. He's a Monero Gundam. Uh, it was just us like, and that's all stuff that we just like. Like we're like, all right, like <laughs> what can we do that we like? Oh, we like anime. We like video games. We like yeah. Monero. Let's combine it all together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you guys think is next for uh, for your projects? I mean, you just is you gonna try to come up with a full album or? Yeah, I I know. So, um, ideally, a few things will happen. Um, we'll absolutely keep making shit. Uh, uh, I think the reason I'm a bit loose with it is because. Fuck is absolutely part of what fuck w is trying to do is teach an audience, right? Like I'm not really known, and I've had a, a little bit of success, and I've been on some people's projects and stuff. But this is the first time I think anyone's been able to hear me sort of in multiple songs, and so part of what I wanted to happen with this project was for people to understand that there's a way to listen to it. It's just like it's like fine. Well, I, I think again, Aptin could speak to this. Uh, it's like falling in love with the new director. Like they're gonna have certain shots that he showed me. I was like super green behind the ears with uh, with Kubrick. And so he sort of just sends me a video that like really highlights some of the quintessential Kubrick shots and elements and tones. Um, watching a new director or listening to a new musician, they're all, they're, making choices like that and so teaching your audience that there are certain choices that i'm going to make and they're they're ramping up the aesthetic value of my art uh is what fuck tries to do that being said it absolutely if you read this story um it's absolutely and read the sort of the the write-up that i did it's a meta narrative which means that this project is supposed to be housed in another project the same way that this book is. So the book uh, reads, the book Erasure by Percival Everett reads as one story, but then within that story, the character within that story writes and tells another story. And that story is fuck. And so I'm doing the same thing and modeling off of that work. Um, so that's coming next, but also just like a bunch of other shit we've been working on uh, musically. And then ideally, being able to continue to shoot videos because I think again this aesthetic pairing couldn't be done more perfectly. Um, I use a lot of illusion. I use a lot of references. That's important to me. I'm an I'm an English major twice over. So yeah, Ben I, and I Ben and I both studied uh, English literature. 
So I think we both we yeah. both love the just the idea of alluding to, you know, symbolism and illusions. So then that that sort of baking that into our process, uh, you you need like I need to work with a director uh, and other artists who can do that same thing. So all of that to say, like certainly more is on the way. Um, and I think ideally what we're gonna do is sort of continue to like invite you into the world. I guess that's really what I wanted to say is like, yeah, we're trying to craft the universe, right? When you see this video, I'm kind of like slightly in a magical realism. I'm like in Detroit, but it's Detroit as we've never seen it, where it's not burdened by what we know about Detroit. It's not burdened by Motown. It's not burdened by Ford and car companies. It's like this liberate, it's just like, what the fuck? He does anything he wants. It's a giant playground. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Goats <laughs> running giant, around. Yeah, yeah giant like, so, playground. Where'd and you guys so, get the goat? Oh, man, the goat came with Detroit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, it literally came, came with the city. And so we got we got real lucky with Rich Hutchins, our producer. Actually, the, yeah. the goat, the story of the goat is we were driving on the freeway towards one of our locations and the sun was setting. And we're like, what can we shoot while the sun is setting? And Rich was like, well, you know, if I take this freeway exit, there's a guy who lives here who has a goat. Yep. You're like, sick. Like, all right, cool. Exit right here. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeah. And that's important because, you know, with film, it's, it's, it's certainly about both quality and quantity. So, so much of the process was just trying shit and just having shots available to use. There's, we, we maybe did 60 setups and used 40, right? right. Um, just because that's like sort of necessary. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's, again, there's so many links to cryptocurrency. It, you just, there's hella cryptos out there. All of them are not gonna survive, right? And that's totally okay. What's gonna survive is the shit that's good. Um, that's yeah. gonna make the video, you know? So. Would would you guys consider going to the Monero community if you had, you know, had a project you wanted to work on? So instead of kind of, uh, you know, trying to fund it on the back end, maybe trying to fund it up front, uh, you know, getting donations yeah. before you guys, I, I don't, you know, I don't know how yeah. successful it would be, but. I, yeah. I, yeah, I was actually, I was for a while, I was actually writing a TV show idea that was a thriller, uh, dark web thriller. And I wanted to fund it with Monero in, on the front end. Um, I was looking at something like that. And also just, there was a time when I was playing around with the idea of making a documentary about Monero as well. Um, and I think that's something that, that we would hope for is to, to even just to, to communicate with the Monero devs and just be like, hey, like, we want to make this thing. Maybe throw us like some Monero, whatever, like help us out. Right. <laughs> um, but I think actually just going back to what Ben was saying, one of the things that's so bold about what Ben is doing, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, but his his EP fuck is actually a satire. Like he's starting, like his real album is erasure, and that's the real music he wants to make. And he's starting with something that he wants to erase. That's what erasure is doing, is erasing fuck. So he's starting with something that's essentially a satire and is is playing with all these tropes of hip hop because the song is just about making money. This song that he released, but Ben, like, he's just having fun with us. When he told me that, just a fucking erasure, I was like, this is just such a bold move that you're coming out the gate with something that you're trying to erase. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's that's like the nail on the head. I think I think the the value of what we're doing and that I would I would hope anybody who's watching this or anyone who sort of hops on the train um and, and sort of keeps up with the journey is like we're we're treating this or, or at least in my in my opinion, we're treating this much more like a TV, you know, uh, a TV series. And that the art has, has, there's planned obsolescence, right? Like we're trying to get something done within the work. Um, and then through that, people will want to, they will be like, hey, Abteen, 
uh, but Gary, Benjamin, or Turner, they work on hot shit. If we put money in their hands, they are going to plan basically a series of work that will be worthwhile. What it will be, I don't know, but we know it'll be hot. Um, and so that's that's sort of, I think, what Abteen's alluding to, um, it, where the thought is that there's a roadmap and there is an ending. There, there will be a point where I won't make music in this way, or I may not even make music anymore, but it won't mean that I, I don't make art. Uh, but the idea behind it is that we're going somewhere, right? That there's a train to hop on. You're a part of a journey now. Mm -hmm. um, if you've seen this, if you are watching, if you're listening, if you've heard the music, if you've seen the video, you suddenly have embarked on a journey and we're gonna, we're gonna go somewhere. Um, and it's gonna be dope as fuck, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And we, we, we've talked too about like Ben and I, um, writer, you know, like it's not just music. Like we want to make films as, and Ben is an actor, you know, like there's just, I think for me, I've been looking for a long time to find a collaborator like Ben, like someone whose art I just really appreciate and love. And it's just, it's so hard to find someone like that, that Ben trusts you, you know? Um, because I've worked with I've worked with great artists, but like just one time, you know, like we do one video and then yeah, I never hear from them. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but I think I, I'm hoping that you know we have like a a very fruitful and lifelong collaboration right. going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I hope this becomes the first of many for you guys. I mean, it it certainly seems like you're you got a good start here. You're on the right track. Uh, I could see this thing getting pretty big. Uh, just this this release you had. I don't really know how the industry yeah. works, but I mean, if if pure talent and art rises to the top, uh, you guys got a pretty good chance yeah. there. Well, I mean, what, what I was just talking about this tonight with someone in London. Um, like, we're gonna make people accept Ben through brute force. You know, you know? like. This video, it's fine. Like if this video doesn't take off, doesn't matter. We're gonna make another one. We're just gonna keep doing it, and eventually people will say, like, "Wow, how did this guy make so many videos? Where is he getting all this money?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and eventually we'll have to accept him. I mean, for me, Ben is an undeniable talent. Like, there's no, I have no doubts. Like, there's no, I. The only way that he won't make it is if he if he quits. But if he keeps at it, like, I just have absolute faith. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, I guess the, the last thing I would, we have, um, we're throwing a, a Monero after party, our second annual. We did it in New York last year. Nice. I don't know if you guys know, do you guys know what consensus is? Um, mm -hmm. it, it's it's yeah. a big conference in New York that happens in the spring, like one of the Bitcoin conferences. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So I, I know we could talk. We could are, talk. You, are you in, are you in, uh, New, are you in New York? Yeah, I'm in New York. Yeah. Or, okay we could talk offline but maybe you guys would be interested in attending and i don't know maybe putting on a performance would be amazing we're coming, to, we're coming right to, yeah we're coming to consent yeah that's we'll be <laughs> okay yeah you're gonna, you are got you guys are coming to that i mean yeah. now we are yeah <laughs> uh yeah no the party last year was really awesome because it wasn't your typical crypto party it was in fact everything in keeping with monero it was underground and secret you had to pay Monero Beautiful. to attend, and you only got the address if you uh, threw the Monero net. We sent it through the payment IDs, which won't probably nice. won't exist anymore then. But yeah. we did it in a very cryptic way, and it was yeah. very cool. And we had uh, you know Fluffy Pony and a lot of the other characters were there. Uh, yeah. Sponsored by Cake Wallet, which yeah. you know you'll be able to meet the Cake Wallet guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I, was just, yeah. I was just. Uh, I was just. I love that. Just everything is so open in the Monero community. Like. I was like, I need to talk to the cake wallet guy. <clears throat> so I just messaged him on Telegram. Like he responded immediately. He was like, hey man, like <laughs> thanks for thanks for checking out cake wallet. Like <laughs> Yeah, Vic, Vic is extremely uh responsive. Um and he's one of the the you know the true open source wallets, so, you know, one of the wallets you could actually trust. It's been it's open source, it's been vetted. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, no, so I just wanted to throw that out there. We could talk more about it offline, but that'd be awesome if you guys could uh that'd be amazing come to the Monero yeah, party. Really amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys. Best of luck. Um, I was I was blown away. I will I will tell everyone and I'll keep uh spreading it out socially here in New York. 
Oh, I no, think it's, you, it's, it's a great way to introduce people to Monero without having to talk about Monero. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, awesome. fellas. Have a yeah, good night. Thanks. Yeah, you yeah, too. Thank you. Good night. Bye.